Convergence is here, and unexpectedly, we have the release of new Holocron documents and a rules reference. We dive into the nitty-gritty to uncover all the changes and updates you need to know. We also take a look at the infinite format, with some adjustments that are a bit... Eh, unexpected. <laughs> this is episode 126. That was unexpected. You have been well trained. No, you don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. Please do not Welcome back, everyone, to another week of the Chance Cube. Slightly delayed. We apologize for those watching live who, uh, who I, you know, computers are, are a wonderful thing. But we are here and we are ready to talk about some Destiny. Uh, yeah, yeah. Things happened. We we had this whole show planned out, and then other things happened. So we said, "Ditch it. We'll save it for another day." Uh, because the thing that happened, we did not expect to happen. The rules reference and the Holocron documents uh, were released today, kind of quietly. Of course, you know, someone's per refreshing use. that page every five seconds to see when they're going to drop, so they can yeah. be like the first ones to say they're here, and they're here. They're here. Yeah. There's a lot here. There's a lot there. Like, There's a lot here. Uh, so we're, so uh, we'll, we'll dive into that. Show. Yeah, we'll dive into that in just a little bit. Um, Kim? Hey. You wrote a hey. thing. I was going to let you talk about your thing. Uh, I wrote a thing. So last week I told you guys to go to Amazon and buy a discounted box of Across the Galaxy because I did. And I finally got a Snoke. Nice. You just won, though. That makes me one. Nice. <laughs> All right. In, in um, way of the force. Was fun. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. That's what I bought. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what you bought. I don't know what I bought. So it was a you white guys box. Were, well, it was with Star Wars box characters on it. With Luke on the front. <laughs> um, so while you guys were cracking convergence packs, I was cracking my discounted across the no way of the force box. <laughs> nice. I got a dark saber too. Those are probably the two highlights. I like Dark Saber right, a lot. And one of the yeah, Grievouses I... was in there. And Bushleya was in there. Bougie. Right? Nice. Or maybe we got her in some packs. Because we did buy some packs last week, too. Um, and got a couple of good things. So now, because life is insane, I'm going to attempt to put a deck together tonight so I can go play tomorrow. Because I missed our... I did not get to go to our draft event. On oh, Friday, no. I'm a little, I'm a little bummed about that, but we're got in the way per usual. Yeah. Um, per usual. <laughs> that's just how it is sometimes. Yeah. Month end is really hard to get away from work to get stuff done. It just is what it is in my business. So, mm, um, the banking business. Yeah, they don't like it when you're like, so I'm gonna leave it like four on front. Yeah, they don't like that. So, <laughs> um, eh. so hopefully I can get something. I I'm still waiting on you guys to help me with this gungan deck so i don't know if i'm gonna try to take that tomorrow or if i'm gonna just throw some fun together and see what comes out of it I don't there know. you go that's the way to do it but now i have to look at the stinking rules reference and figure out what on god's green earth everything costs again you know what kim that's what we're gonna talk about today i know, we're, know. we're gonna help you out with that you'll know someone would today. like to make me a cheat sheet oh wait i don't even i think that would be like a fold out road map now that i'm gonna have <laughs> yeah, to take it would be a poster <laughs> <laughs> cheap poster Jeez Louise. yeah yeah no we have um we have i think a box convergence coming tomorrow and nice. i just finished sorting all my cards back into the binders because i've got to build my deck myself i think my work schedule is going to allow me to go to a, to um our local next uh week from saturday mm -hmm. and i don't want to show up at the jackal hunt without a deck so there you go yeah jackal hunt that's gonna be fun we just I, keep I, promoting that event for them. I know. Do they do they even know that we've said it every episode since he's been on? I don't and know. I'm going to have to message Eric and these. tell him. You let him know. They watch. You don't know uh, if you're in listen, the area. They like, listen to the, the, re the re-repeat on podcasts. So yeah. they listen. They are. If you're in the area, they are nice guys. And that sounds like a super fun event that I mm -hmm. wish I could find a cheap flight down there. Yeah. Um, Hopefully they're sending you, some Mike? of those promos. Uh, how's i know you've been doing a lot of playtesting convergence are you uh you ready to get your hands on some cards i am and i have a box coming probably tomorrow or uh thursday somewhere somewhere around there uh so Very i cool. am definitely looking forward to that 
the TTS has been running nonstop on my computer for uh, for a while. Uh, oh. And then I also wanted to give a shout out to a company. This isn't like sponsor. They didn't send me any products, but there's this company called Burger Tokens. Have you guys heard of this? Mm. Yep, yeah. I sure have. Mm -hmm. So it's a penny, and you take like these stickers, and you put them on either side of the stickers. So like the coin has weight, or the the token has weight from the coin, and they're like they're just really cool tokens. So uh, if you're looking for some token, I mean, this, everybody has tokens, right? But if you're looking for some cool, inexpensive tokens that are different than what I've been seeing out there, check out Burger Tokens. Mm. They're uh, they're pretty cool. Oh, and fun! I, and I use them for key cool. forge too. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, let's just dive on right into the news because uh, we need to get, we need to get to this rules thing quickly. News. Let me take that back, huh? News, find what you need. <laughs> uh, one thing that did happen last week that deserves note: uh, Adepticon. Well, Convergence was released. Yay! Everybody knows. Um, Adepticon <laughs> uh, happened, uh, which was. You know, it didn't get the coverage I think that people were hoping it would get because they were hoping that Convergence was going to be fully legal and standard and, and it was going to be the first big real event um, that had Convergence in play, and it wasn't. Uh, I believe they had a draft with Convergence, but yeah. with Rivals. So that a little bit mismatched um, in terms of just playing with them. But uh, one of the cool things, if, you, uh, if you're over on the Facebook page uh pages um yeah whatever so uh, there was a lot of posts of the um the spot glosses and all the promo cards that, that yeah. seem to just keep growing and growing from this event um and now they're cheaper remember so we had steve on a while back he was telling us how they were going to be e more easily obtained uh, at these events so uh, you know if you have a favorite character i mean eventually they're gonna have a oh yeah nice you're gonna have yeah them. There's a lot of there's a lot of really nice spot gloss. Uh, they're doing such oh. a good job with them. I'm very impressed with the ones that I've got so far from my galactic qualifiers, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be grinding for them tickets again when it comes around for sure. That's sure. That's sure. Mm -hmm. I like the um yeah the full art plots are really cool. Yeah, uh, they, they look like they're spot glosses that have got some 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 dimension to them. So it's nice that they can uh, there's you know just the sheer game design allows you to kind of mess with uh, characters and plots and battlefields and do some really cool things with them uh, from mm -hmm. an art standpoint. So uh, if you see a gelatic qualifier, wow, jo mm, words gelactic. are hard. If you see a gelat <laughs> gelatinous <laughs> cube, run the other oh, way. Oh, a, Please enjoy it. Game. Uh, <laughs> um, if you see a galactic qualifier heading your way or within driving distance of you, uh, it's definitely worth the oh. weekend. Go. It is Go. so fun. Um, and now, uh, now that infinite format is going to be a thing, um, it's definitely worth checking out because that's going to be one of the places that's really going to support those. Speaking of interesting things that I saw that is not on the script, um, <gasps> did, you saw it's FFG script. drop. Look out. I know, I'll script. FFG dropped all that stuff they're going to be doing at Celebration. Oh, yeah. I did see that this week. So they're, I they're, uh, the thing I wish I was going to that I'm not going to. Right, they're sporting several tournaments at Star Wars Celebration, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, last time at Celebration, they did not have as many organized events. I think they may have done something with X Wing, but otherwise, it was you know demo and come play, and they had staff challenges. This time, every day uh, in the early evening, they're running some sort of Star Wars Destiny tournament hmm. among X Wing and, and other things. Um, but Infinite is one of the formats. They're the Infinite and Standard are the two formats they're supporting, which I thought was uh, interesting. interesting. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, if there's any special prizes that come out of it. You know, last time celebration, they had the full art, um, Krennic and Jen Urso. So I'm wondering if they're going to do something similar this time. Um, oh, and yeah. who I know is going, who will actually get one and who will actually send it to me. So I'm still waiting for the Rex from San Diego Comic-Con that I have yet to get from someone who was supposed to give me one. Who? Bummer. So now I'm sad. Uh, uh, now I, I, I've out. worked myself into a tizzy. Call this person oh. out on national Twitch stream. You know on who you are. You know who you person. are. International. You person. You. I don't know. It was I'm probably good. Monk. It wasn't Monk. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, nah, Monk seems so good how, on his promises. How about that Adapticon, the trilogy, Galactic Qualifier winner 
deck. Did you guys see that? Snuggle I did not see Trader that. Trader Newt. Oh. And it's like really. And it's like uh, it's very support heavy. Uh, it's got hmm. some big upgrades, but mostly you know supports, and it just looks looks like a pretty awesome deck. There's a full write up over on uh, um, SWDD, so you should check that nice. out. Yeah, it's got the full breakdown. That's it's, cool. It's a good deck. I like it when uh, I mean this that right the right sneaking right at the end of the last meta. That's the time to really put in some sort of secret sauce that's going to surprise everyone. That's funny. Hey, guess what? Uh, guess what battlefield they're using. Thebe. Thede's Palace. <laughs> who didn't use Thede? Oh, wait, because no who player. didn't use Thede? No player ever. No player ever. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it's, you know, the news roundup uh, really, I think, has to end with a thorough deep dive into the rules. So let's just skip on past the rest of the formalities and go right into it. But first, a word from our sponsor. You know, Mike, I just can't seem to get the cards I need in the booster packs I bought. I'm still missing a Mother Talzin, a Darth Maul, and I need some more battle droids. That five wide droid deck isn't going to build itself, and I have all these extra Yodas. Seriously, Kim, I told you, check out Armada Games. You can buy and sell Destiny cards on their website, shoparmada.com. It's just a few simple clicks and bam, you are done. I used it just the other day, and now I got two, count them, two Maul Sabers heading my way. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're in the middle of a break here. Jason, you know how you've got all those extra cards from all those booster boxes you open? Mike says you can sell them online super easy. No way, seriously? How? I've got to make room before this next set comes out. Jason, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, Armada Games has just what you're looking for. You can buy and sell your Destiny singles all from the comfort of your living room. Pre-order the latest sets of boosters and find the droids you are looking for. You can also check out their selection of Destiny accessories. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. For an even better deal, be sure to use the coupon code THECHANCECUBE and receive 5% off your Destiny purchase. Visit their website at shoparmada.com. Armada Games. Get in here and game. But you know what I always say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. So the rules reference dropped this today. The rules reference that is not yet effective until April 8th, if I remember the date. Uh, That's but what that I thought I sold to. Just in time That's for celebrating. Birthday. That's my birthday. Just so you oh, know. Happy birthday. Aww. Just so the world knows. I have to uh, stop everything for that. It's just in time fair. for everything uh, getting ready to happen with um, all the upcoming Galactic Qualifiers. So fear not. Uh, these are the rules reference. This is the rules reference that everybody's going to start playing to anyways. Um, so enjoy it. Uh, so surprisingly... And this is this is uh, Kim. You're going to kind of we're going to live vicariously through you, um, oh, as, you as you as uh, you frustratedly put earlier on our um, podcast chat uh, that uh, if you were a new player and you saw all this come out, you'd probably say, "What the heck? I'm running away." I'd go buy another board game. <laughs> I'm just being uh, honest. Like, in fact, I've thought about just going to buy another board game. <laughs> So our goal today, of course, is to discuss uh, the changes to the rules reference um, in a way that just makes it easy to digest. If you're a, a newer player to the game, you came in during the Awakenings, uh, during the um, Legacies era, uh, it's, which is a great time. If you come in during Convergence era, it's also a great time to come into the game. It's always a great time to come into this game. Um, this particular uh, set of updates feels a little bit overwhelming, um, but it's not. Uh, the the best part is the rules reference itself hasn't changed all that much. If you're used to playing Star Wars Destiny, not much has changed. They incorporate downgrades. That was the biggest chunk of things they added. Right. Uh, and there's no surprise to downgrades, right? Um, you can put three downgrades on a character. Uh, that's really it. Yay. It's really putting them down. Really putting uh, them down. Uh, 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 they did... Um, I, I don't know how this would ever come into play, really, but they did clarify that if you have three upgrades or three downgrades on a character and you add a fourth upgrade or a fourth downgrade, then the controller of those cards gets to choose which one goes away. Hmm. I mean, I guess I could see an opponent... In, in an instance where an opponent forces you to play a card and it causes that to happen, but it's probably so few and far between. It seemed like an odd inclusion into the rules reference to, for me. So let wait, let's read the rule one more time here. Um, 
Where is that? Because what if you're doing it over? Well, I guess that's overriding, huh? Yeah. I'm trying to think of a scenario where you try and. Yeah. So each card has an upgrade limit of three. Mm -hmm. If a card has more upgrades than its upgrade limit, its controller chooses and discards upgrades from it until its limit is met. Okay. So So it's upgrade. So it's permitting you to play three upgrades, more than three upgrades on a card. Just knowing that once that happens, you must discard cards. You must discard upgrades until you reach three. So, like, Grievous was allowed to have four, right? So, I imagine we're going to get cards or supports that are going to allow you to have more than three upgrades. That must be it. And then if that's the case, if you destroy that support, now you're no longer allowed to have three upgrades. So, Mm -hmm. your opponent gets to choose, not you. Maybe I think probably that to me sounds like they're clarifying something ahead of the curve. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's fair. Which is unusual. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> well, maybe they're getting heavy. Who said again. that? Who's right? There? Who said that? Uh, there was some clarification on the set aside zone, but mainly it was basically saying instead of they're, they're generalizing all the rules because upgrades can now be played on multiple things, not just characters. So instead of they're saying a card can mm-hmm. hold three upgrades, not just a character, because supports can have upgrades. Uh, who knows what in the future we'll be able to have upgrades as well. Um, and you can you'll be able to bring cards to the game that you set aside, not just dice. Uh, nothing really surprising there. Um, the deck building rules, they were uh, clarifying. Um, so there are so many more cards now that allow you to that break the deck building rules, right? Bring villains when you have heroes and you know bring X number of whatever. Uh, they're clarifying that each one of those rules is isolated. You can't stack them. Um, so the, so the, uh, exam- okay. the example is given um, the if you have in- Infest Nest and two Infest Nest Marauders, you can include four hero cards and four villain cards in your deck. If that player also brings the plot double down, um, you're not allowed to add any additional hero or villain cards because the ability is separate from, from that ability with Infest Nest. So you can't... You, these break deck building rules, but the rules themselves don't break each other, if that makes sense. They're not stacking. Yeah, sure. it's not a stack... Yeah, deck building rules are not... Breaking rules are not stackable. I think that's a little... Um, it's a little specific. I'm sure it'll come into play. Um, mm-hmm. And then the, everything like else, it. you don't like it. That's fair. No, because, I mean, if you're trying, that's the fun of deck building, right? Is finding those little loopholes and, sure. you know, try, you know, sometimes trying to break the game. And yep. this just basically takes all of that away. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's closing wanna, some of the loops. Break, yeah. fine. Uh, break the game. That's fine, break Mike. It. Break it. Just break it. No, that's uh, not And then, of course, <laughs> characters, you know, the biggest the, the biggest impact that this update has is character subtypes. Um, mm-hmm. First off, it says um, it, it, there are certain cards that will allow you to actually choose a subtype for a character, and the rules reference limits that list of subtypes. Now, the list okay. is long. It is a long list yeah. of subtypes. Like, you can't go to a character and say, choose a subtype, and you decide to call it um, an Ithorian, because that is not a legal subtype. Won't do you any good, I guess. You can call it whatever the crap you want, but it isn't going to do you any good if you do that. (laughs) Right. Um, But the list of subtypes include Advisor, Apprentice, Bounty Hunter, Droid, Engineer, Guard, Gungan, Inquisitor, Jawa, (laughs) Jedi, Leader, Knight Brother, Pilot, Scavenger, Scoundrel, Shapeshifter, Sith, Spectre, Trooper, Witch, or Wookiee. And I imagine that list will expand. Um, and I'm wondering, some of those subtypes are probably put on there before they even thought that subtypes were going to be a thing. Like Spectre. Well, they clearly didn't think subtypes were going to be a thing. No. They didn't. Until Jeremy said, I'm making subtypes a thing. <laughs> Which is and super cool. Not, not only did he make him a thing, he retconned the entire <laughs> Star yeah. Wars destiny in subtypes. Get your shark uh, out. I think that's the thing that I... I, I I, I'm gonna get crap for this, but I think that's the thing that I don't that I dislike the most was them going backwards with it. That's what made it seem overly complicated. It did. So if you if you're at page 24 of the rules reference, um, there <laughs> is 24 pages. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> if you're on page 24 of the rules reference, they basically took every single character that's ever been printed in Star Wars Destiny that did not have a subtype and gave it a subtype. So you might as well print that page out and put it in whatever you take to your events because you're going to have to reference it in some form or another all the flipping time. 
But why it's, all the time? Well, I guess if you play infinite, because I guess a lot of the stuff is rotating out. That's fair. But even then, because the only newer need cards it have it. Building. You don't need it like when you're playing somebody, unless you're trying to double check somebody's. And that's what I'm thinking. If I'm like, do I know if this guy knew? I mean, like, so do you need to check it? I guess that's more of the point. Do you need to check it? Is there a risk that someone's going to cheat? Of course is there is. Saying? I'm so uh, there is. We've, We've seen uh, them cheat on we far just other saw things. Somebody cheat. It's not like it doesn't. Have, it's already happening in Destiny. Like it's. Yeah. This game's not even what. This is two years old. Th three, no, it's two and a half. Yeah, it's two and a half. Even, yeah, okay, so it's not even three years old yet. It's barely two yeah. years old, and we already got like cheaters at a national level. Yeah. Let's so so I'm ah. like, you may need to make sure you know what your opponent's playing and what the what's the the subtype is on it. Yeah. So uh, to your point, I think this this list of subtypes for characters is definitely, it's. It's a lot to digest, and I don't. And I, I've, I've been actually racking my brain, like how do you make, how do you make this easier to digest? And there's, there's really not a good way to do it. Um, in, in except to say, ignore it. Don't even worry about it for now until you come across the need for it, right? Yeah. The 90 ninety percent of these cards are in are parts of sets that are not even part of standard or trilogy play. Mm-hmm. So you have to wait for an infinite style event to to even care for most of these. Um, there are there are a couple of legacy cards. Um, you know, Rose became an engineer. Uh, Maul became a scavenger and a Sith, which that's interesting. That Maul's a scavenger. Um, what he scavenges sense. leg parts. Um, Luke Skywalker <laughs> from Legacies is an <laughs> apprentice, uh, and then you've got your rivals cards and your two player sets. So there's probably like five or six characters that are actually relevant to standard and trilogy play. Um, and well, st standard, right? Trilogy play doesn't even matter anymore because everybody in Convergence has subtitles. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, you get to page 24 of the rules reference and you're like, what the heck? But I would advise anyone who's like, this is too much. I would advise you to ignore this list until you, until you're, you know, six months into the game. You're like, okay, I get it. Now I can process this information. It's not even. It's not even worth it. They need to send everybody a little sheet with stickers, with the little subtype, and you can just slap it on your card. Slap it on your. And your remember, card. these are these are characters, right? So you can modify your sleeves. You can do whatever you want to with them. Yeah, you could just write so, on your sleeve or something. You can write on your sleeve. You can write straight on the card if you want to devalue your card. Um, you know, everybody and their mother is going to be start reprinting the alternate arts with all the stuff on it. Right. From from Parker what I've seen. Get on that. <laughs> right um so i i say ignore it i i don't know what do you say do you say ignore it cam are I, you going to ignore it uh my brain doesn't allow me to do that kind of thing oh, okay so the deck I mean, builder in me does not want to ignore it this is important information this is fun this is this is going to help a lot of people especially because we are getting so much more of this like tribal stuff thing going on where mm -hmm. we want to see all these subtypes so uh i like this this is that's good it's funny I, that they did wreck on the whole game though to make <laughs> sure everybody's got a subtype uh except um uh my mike askelson in the chat said he did miss ahsoka the first ahsoka does not is not on the list oh <laughs> my god oh well i'm done I, that's it i'm, I'm done <laughs> i'm out Jeremy's probably so watching I, right now. Ask, Jeremy, like, you do, missed it. <laughs> do we really? And maybe it's because of Infinite, and maybe that's why. But part of me goes, why did you need to go? Why? Why did you need to go back and do it? If you're printing the new ones and you're taking the game from this point forward with it, what was necessarily the, the necessity to go backwards with it? I think you're right. I think it's to make Infinite a more, a more sexy format. Because this is not the only thing they did to Infinite, which we haven't even gotten to. Oh, that I yet. know. Like, it's like yeah, I almost need a whole other set of cards just to play Infinite with. I mean, honestly, like, it, I, it makes me less interested in playing Infinite personally. Because really? I don't want to deal with it. I like, the, but you don't like the access to everything. Mm, I thought I would, but then they went and jacked it all around. They just so made everybody's it easier points for are you, different. Though. 
Well, but everybody's points are different. Yeah, not everybody, true. but a crap ton of people's points are different. Now I'm like, if I want to be more effective with my deck building, now I got to go look up what this card is and what that card is. And... But that's if you even are building a deck with with anything tribal related to it. Yeah. Any sort of. If, if, so I guess cards don't expect to see me bring things. any of this. <laughs> <laughs> or if I'm you do, not then you look it. it up. And what if you did want to build like that, and they didn't do all this? And you're playing an infinite format and you can't like, oh, you want to play a low bot, but you don't know that he's an advisor. You think he's a droid or something, you know, like you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it say droid on his? I don't know. No, he's an advisor. I don't know. Maybe they changed it. Uh, But um, I, I don't know. I, I appreciate that they did this, especially for infinite, infinite format. So the. The rules reference does have some clarifications for a second version of this card. There's nothing terribly exciting there. Um, and I think the biggest impact to the game as a whole, uh, based on what has we seen recently in the meta, uh, is the errata of Feed's Palace, mm -hmm. uh, which has been the battlefield of choice for everyone except for mill players uh, this entire last set. Uh, if you recall, Feed's Palace um, said power action, um, gain one resource and then spot a neutral character, take one additional action. No one even cared about the neutral character. Um, they just used it to gain a resource. So mm -hmm. they'd have three resources each turn. Uh, they have nerfed it to say that um, you must remove one of your dice to gain one resource, um, making that one resource a little bit harder to obtain. Not for me. I roll blanks. But still, <laughs> you want to maybe re-roll it or... Yeah, I, I think it, I think they definitely made Thede's Palace a little less attractive. Mm -hmm. It's not so much a freebie, right? But yeah, uh, I, don't, I still I, see it played for sure. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's still going to be considered. It's just not going mm -hmm. to be the go-to. Right. People got to start looking around. Um, so, you know, if you've read a rules reference before, you know, skim through for the red. Uh, there's there's not a whole lot of it until you get towards the back half of it um and again most of the red in this rules reference will not change your fundamental understanding of how the game is played nope. which is great um sometimes there's some dramatic changes uh, i would say this one was not dramatic um we move on to uh we now have three standard holocron documents not just two uh sorry three holocron documents the first of which being the standard format um and and this is the I think to to your point, Kim, this is the document that you have with you when you go to an event. Mm -hmm. It's not the thirty pages of a rules reference. You bring a you bring the one page holocron. Um, the standard format has been modified. They removed all of the awakenings block from the eligible cards, added in convergence and allies of necessity draft starter. So they're getting ahead of themselves, knowing that allies of necessity is coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, go ahead, put that in here. There are no modifications to the balance of the force. Um, they just got rid of all the characters that were previously on their part of the Awakenings block. So you only have to worry about Ayla, Captain Phasma, and Snoke. Um, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the previous Holocrons, they would say plus one or plus two points. Now they're just writing out the point values. Because mm -hmm. I think they're trying, I think they, they realized the infinite format, they wanted to do more than just like a blanket, you know, plus or minus points. Um, so that's a nice change. Uh, they added these Palace Errata. Uh, the only other two errata still around in this particular format are Maul's Lightsaber and Strategic Planning. Uh, and last but not least, they have all the subtypes that were added into this the Legacies block that were that were missed the first printing. So now that list that was 100, you know, one full page long now only has 12 characters on it. And that makes more sense for 13 characters. Taking, taking it to the to a tournament with you so that you have it. And you can reference yep. it because these are the this, only this cards is, you will see. This is your reference document for standard. And, yeah. and this is, I think this is more palatable. This is more, it's easy to digest. Yeah. Definitely. No, definitely. No, I totally agree. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. And I, I would say stick to this, print this guy out. Um, they did the same thing with the trilogy document. Uh, uh, the trilogy document is is epic. Um, it's got more artwork on it than it has text, <laughs> uh, and all it has is the eligible cards. Because now trilogy format uh, effective April eighth, 
uh, is just convergence and allies of necessity. So if you are a brand new player to this game, uh, you're just picking up the sets like the first thing you've done, this is where you want to be. Encourage your local stores to throw a Trilogy Knight. Um, convergence, I think, will be powerful enough to stand on its own against a standard format deck um, mm -hmm. in, in a casual setting. I don't yeah. know if you guys agree. I think because this set offers so much more uh, that I think it probably could stand up. I think there's some yep. Seems fair. there's some commons and uncommons that you probably need to get from you know prior sets just to fill out your <clears throat> you know your your event cards. But other than that, I think it probably could. Right. For sure. Um, and I may have misspoke. I think Alan I says he may be further out. Yeah, the next says, next two weeks. Yeah. Um Dadjix two K five said I heard Allies wasn't coming out till summer. Second quarter of twenty nineteen, so April oh, May June. So yeah. So April May That's June. Summer. So, that could you be summer. where you live. <laughs> summer here now. My birthday. But that's um, a couple days. <laughs> I would say, I, I would say, there you go, maybe same birthday. I would say the biggest talk, though, is that we finally see what they're planning on doing with the infinite format. This, um, is, this is a format, this is a format mm -hmm. that I think a lot of people were not interested in pursuing until they saw this. Um, yeah, eligible cards for infinite is anything ever printed for Star Wars Destiny, all the way back to Awakenings. Um, they did a huge balance of the force for Allies and Necessity. It seems like they kept. The, the increased point values in a couple of things like Snoke and Carplut. Um, but they made a significant number of characters cheaper. Mm -hmm. And this is to encourage playing these characters uh, when... Because right now, I mean, who's going to play... Uh, uh, what was Chewbacca? Oh. Right. <laughs> who's going to hey, play K2SO? Hey, man. K2SO and IG-88 were both fifteen twenty, if I remember correctly. And now they're thirteen eighteen. That's a great, uh -huh. that's a great middle range. You can pair an eighteen with an elite, uh, twelve point support character. Um, you can have you know IG eighty eight or or K two S O with two nine uniques, um, that are seven points each. So basically two troopers. No, cheer six it. points each. So two Jawas. <laughs> how, how about cheer it at eleven fourteen? That's kind of deadly. I think we'll see a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of cheer it builds for sure. Yeah, I think that I mean, made it so where you could play Baze and cheer it now too. I think and I saw. Elite, at elite, yes, yeah, that'd be awesome. Akbar, the original Akbar is down to nine twelve. Um, I mean it's 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 interesting to explore these now. I think to your point, Kim, this makes it hard to initially build an a, an infinite deck because you can't look at your cards for the information. Yeah. You have to come. You have to come here um, to start, and anything not listed here. I mean, you know, you really need a whole tables. I mean, I don't know what you need. It's it will be a little challenging, I think, to build that starting lineup, and then after that, I think everything's going to come come in and, and fill in. You just it's just that first initial. I'm going to build my team and the plot and the battlefield. Okay, then what can I put in with it uh, in my thirty card mm -hmm. deck? Um, so that that's where the challenge lies uh, for anyone who wants to start an infant deck now, especially now these point values are so different, um, and and so many options. I'm interested that they drop Palpatine, like the Spirit Rebellion Palpatine, mm -hmm. down to 26 for Elite, um, allowing for a four point plot. Um, there's not a four point blue plot, I don't think it's it's yellow, or a um, six point character and a plot. Negative two. Oh yeah, yeah. You could put in negative plots. But mm, what's interesting. Six? Jawa is not six, huh? Jawa's eight. No, Jawa's six. Oh, so you could pair it with. You're looking Jawa. at Jawa and that, uh, that shape shifter. I think are the only two six pointers right now, until the Ewoks come in. They're coming. Oh, six. Oh my six point Ewok. They won't. Oh, maybe they will be neutral. They do eat people. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'm really curious to see what combinations of characters people are going to pull together for Infinite. Because um, that's really... It's really fascinating. I mean, I couldn't even begin to start fathoming character pairings with this. Yeah. But this is this is an open acknowledgement from FFG of the power creep in the game. 
um, and them trying to fix it for this format that opens up to all cards. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty it's pretty surprising to see them go this route. Um, now the infinite format holocron is uh, three pages. The second page has every errata for every card. Um, all the erratas are still in play for this format. Uh, and then your third page is yet again another list of um, <laughs> <laughs> all the subtypes that have been added to characters. Uh, so it's basically the same as page 24 in the rules reference, uh, except instead of two columns, it's now three. And instead of a glaring red, it's a nice, soft bronze yellow. Because <laughs> it makes a difference. Yeah. Less obtuse. It's less, it makes Kim less angry when she looks at this list. True. It's, it's, very it's true. just a lot That's to it. digest. <laughs> it's just a lot to digest. Can you play Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon yet? Because I haven't looked at the list. In fact, it was just red and a lot happening, and so I just stopped. Obi, 1418. Um, they didn't change Qui-Gon. I quit. Okay. Bye. I'm out. Peace out. No Ahsoka. <laughs> they, I still can't play Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. They don't care about me at all. Oh, they changed <laughs> the point fight for Ahsoka, though. She, they just didn't give her a subtitle. <laughs> Which is weird. They should have. Like She should be a Prentice, at least, right? Or Right. Does she not have a oh. subtitle currently? What? Monk's right. Built to last on the new Palpatine. Because that's a... Ugh. That's gross. Is that four points or three points? Uh, it's... It doesn't matter. I think it's three. Yeah, he can afford it. It's three. I, I, yeah, he, he can afford it. Exactly. Well, that's the one that adds an extra upgrade. Oh, no. That's gross. <laughs> he said he'd never heard the phrase. Don't you watch commercials for trucks, Monk? <laughs> um yes so i don't know i want to i'd love to get infinite infinite a try i i i think i'm in i'm personally in the same boat as kim i think it's going to be a little challenging to build a deck um, i'm not a great deck builder like so i, I should probably lead with that yeah so no, it's I, very I overwhelming for my brain like for it's me just... it's just a timing perspective and i think um there's going to be a lot of creativity from the community and I I won't I I, you know, I don't mind. I'm gonna probably pull someone's ideas and 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 build off of it, right? Net decking is not it's not a sin as long as you do it right. I also don't like doing don't, that, which makes me terrible at this game. Don't just play someone's deck straight up. At least oh, I never play someone's deck straight up. You, you no, I'm just start, saying for start everybody. somewhere and then yeah. If you're gonna do it right, you know, find a deck that looks interesting to you. And then see how you can make it fit your play style more because the deck that someone built is built for their play style and their meta and, and their meta. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. huge because yeah. we see some decks across the pond that have have would have no business in this meta. It wouldn't mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. So same, yeah. same decks we build would not fit in their meta and they would get cream because they are teching for that yep. sort of deck. So sure. Yeah, meta and personal playstyle have a huge impact, and you should definitely take that into account when building a deck. And if you net deck, take the time and do something about it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this so message any... brought to you by <laughs> the, the Mike Hill. The Mike Hill. At the chance game. Um, any <laughs> any <laughs> lasting, any final thoughts? Like, I I was expecting this to be more significant. I think the, sorry. This was significant, but I wasn't expecting the significance to be this. Okay. The actual the actual updates with convergence was lukewarm at best. Mm hmm. And which is great. I think that's important. Uh, but to your point, Kim, I think while the information about these subtitles is is probably needed, um, this is a lot right now. Uh, and if you're an and I, and I apologize for any new player who just joins the giant Facebook group and then sees all this stuff get up there and like implodes. Mm -hmm. You're like, what am I doing? I'm um, going to go play Keyforge. No. Or no. Transformers. Transformers yeah, is on wave three. Not Transformers. Not. Don't. <laughs> don't go play Transformers. I, I've never played that. Not Cam, like you're not helping that. this. You're not helping this cause. But oh. Keyforge, on the other hand. <laughs> It's hey, awesome. there's gonna, at least going to be a... So I keep watching the Origins schedule, and so far no GQs, but there's some um, some stuff happening for Keyforge, I think. So they better get on it. 
Yeah, they better get on it. So any final thoughts on, on what happened here from you guys? From the rules reference and holocrons? I honestly need to digest it more. I, I did not have much of an opportunity to digest it today just with things going on at work and stuff, but it's a lot. It's a, I mean, it, to look at it from the outside, it's, it, if you're a, if you're a steady deck builder, who's elbow deep in this game and super comfortable, it probably isn't that bad for you. And for that, that's awesome, man. Congrats to you. Um, my brain doesn't work like yours. I have to take all the information and digest it and process it. And then I'll feel better about it. Uh, same. I think there's a lot of digestion to do. I think there is a lot of, there's going to be a lot of unique pairings that we'll see come out. Uh, I'm interested to see what's going to work now and how it will change metas. Cause this kind of thing definitely changes the meta. It switches up everybody's building style mm -hmm. and opens more doors for who knows, maybe mill is going to be a lot better now with these uh, price changes or, you know, who knows? So I'm excited yeah. to see what it will do. And uh, I'm excited to start working on the pairings because I haven't even had it. It's, I mean, it's been like what, eight hours, 10 hours since this dropped. So I haven't yeah. even got to try out pairings yet. So I'm interested to uh, check it out for sure. Well, ah. I think to your point, Mike, I think that is one thing to consider is infinite's going to be, it's not going to be the same old deck winning. I hope not. I mean, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. It'll be nice to have a lot of variety in that format. Mm -hmm. Monk's Palpatine. <laughs> Sorry, Monk. We'll see. I I think on a larger scale, I'm interested <laughs> uh, in how the... Because Trilogy has always been the uh, practice for the next rotation. There hasn't been a lot of focus on Trilogy until, mm -hmm. like, you know, a, a meta gets stale and they say, okay, let's play Trilogy now. Um, Infinite seems to have different legs behind it uh, and i'm curious to see how much it's going to defer diversify um events people's playing um content creators output uh, and, and where where infinite's going to go um or will infinite eventually you know stand side by side with trilogy as like a novelty format mm -hmm. um they, they're certainly you know i think jeremy and team put a little more into infinite than we expected them to Mm -hmm. um, I was expecting him to be like, okay, have fun, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but they actually carefully crafted it so that um, that power creep is not felt as much when it comes to these characters. Uh, so I, I can't wait to see what happens with infinite. I can't, I, I can't wait to, you know, uh, those, maybe those cards won't gather dust in my binder. Who knows? I think infinite is going to outgrow itself fairly quickly. I think we'll need to see, sideboards i think we'll need to see maybe a larger draw deck or more points for the character builds for the pairings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i it i i think it would be more interesting to see like a 40 card draw deck or you know 30 cards but you maybe mill isn't an option so your Can't. cards rotate or you know when you're your, yeah yeah reshuffle and draw again well i mean it there's there's always room for the ludicrous format i i think it's ludicrous. i think it's needed i God. think it's like commander right in magic we need right. mm -hmm. we need that bigger format we have enough we're getting close to having enough uh draw or n enough to build from so yeah uh we'll see like all Thanks. right well uh speaking of convergence and new things let's go ahead and jump in to review the answers to last week's question question of the week there can be no mistakes this time so last week we wanted to know what your favorite cards that you were looking forward to what cards what characters you were most excited to try out um and you guys gave us a lot of great answers so uh let's see joe harris adventurous and dengar Nice. I, I like that. Ray Lahan. I would like is, to is, see is, Ray Lahan's uh, excited about Watto. I, I there's some there's some uh, little rumblings about him uh, being a a solid support character for the villains. So can't wait to see that happen. Uh, Jim Goss says Infest, uh Palp and Padme. Who who well, doesn't want to try the new Palp? I mean, let's be honest. 
Oh, uh, well, that's true. Oh, who doesn't like, want to try Infest Ness? That's yeah, the that one I'm pretty excited good. for. Is that the, that's the one? That's the one for me, for sure. Uh, Mateus, Billy. Mateus well, said Padme. I'm excited about Padme myself. Lots of Padme. Billy also said Padme and Mace. Mm. I'm happy to see Mace come back. He was kind of fun to play early on, but just wasn't quite what you needed. Like, for sure. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out like I hoped it would. Zachary Shield says Yoda, the special is strong in the set. Set much chaining, I foresee. <laughs> so he's excited to try an old character to, to abuse the new characters in the set. Excellent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seems legit. Uh, <laughs> a lot of who else did we miss? Is anybody other? Mark Mark Lockett, Easy Pad, uh, Easy Padme, and um, Padme, and for casual play, Padme. I think he so, wants. I think he's excited about Padme. Oh, Padme. Um, um, Padme. Uh, although the the first comment we got on the question of the week uh, was from our new good friend Parker Simpson. Parker Simpson artwork. <laughs> Parker Simpson artwork. Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> if you're about? not following it, I suggest you should. He does more than Star Wars art. I learned just this week. Oh yeah, yeah, he does. Uh, so his answer though for the question of the week, I'm excited <laughs> to try out for sort of stormtrooper. I've never seen anything like it with a big old face emoji. <laughs> Love it. That's great. So uh, thank you, everyone. You have squandered another week away here listening to the Chance Cube live on Twitch um, oh or not so live on YouTube and or uh, sort of live podcasting on Twitch. Channel podcasting channels um if you're listening if you're watching us live thank you for following and subscribing for those who have uh, we really appreciate it if you're watching this on youtube hit the subscribe button hit notify more youtube videos are coming out soon um and if you are listening via podcast please let us leave us a review on your favorite podcast app uh it certainly helps us if you follow the price watch and all the things we do with that please check out um for you iphone users the uh the chance cubes price watch is now available on the app store for the lower price of 2.99 uh while that may seem high for an app um it is very low compared to all the other things uh that uh this channel is able to provide with that mm-hmm. funding um so so please and thank you that support is uh is much needed uh and appreciated and convergence is now available with at least four stores reporting prices out uh for that set head over to our facebook page pinned at the top with infinite format balance of the force who is going to get dusted off from your binder um let us know what characters you're looking to bring back into the fold uh in the infinite format uh and join us next week where uh, we may have a special guest we may have less technical difficulties we we may not. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should, folks. It re- right. it really does flow smoothly, you guys. Like often, just not tonight. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great week. Have a great week. Later, y'all. This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.